no more. You never seem to call me lately. Gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Kerbal Space Program. Uh, I'm Tronin, and in our last episode, we carried out some missions, did some basic stuff to get ourselves started. Uh, if we have a look at our archives, we completed um, a few uh, sort of very basic uh, missions to, to get ourselves started, to unlock some science and so on and so forth. Um, we had a little bit of an issue with these two missions here. Um, the Despite meeting all the objectives on this, uh, the mission just wouldn't complete. Um, I, I'm thinking now that perhaps the escape trajectory was escaping the sphere of influence of carbon, so this would have been one that we would be able to complete if we were on our way to the moon, for example. So, there was that one, and also the test the Mark 16 parachute, which is the one that we've been using this entire time. Um, we had it fitted at carbon, we were flying, we had our altitude, uh, we deployed it in this bracket here, <coughs> our speed was about right. These all ticked off, um, and then as I dropped out of this altitude, it became unticked, so I'm not exactly sure what on earth was going on there. So basically I've just shit canned these two uh, missions. So uh, what we'll be doing today is we're going to go for one of the big ones, which is Orbit Carbon. Now, this will involve a bit of a redesign of our uh, craft. Uh, we'll get ourselves up and out of the atmosphere and into a stable orbit and with a bit of luck, uh, hopefully get back down safely. So we're going to take that one. I'm only going to take that one mission at the moment uh, because it's going to require building something that's quite uh, specific to, to this, this mission. I don't want to take any stuff that's not going to be necessary and you know risk cocking up. So we'll just have a look at our R&D. Um, now from the science that we gained in the last episode we've unlocked a, a few things. Um, so we've got, uh, we, we've picked up the survivability here which gives us some radial decouplers, uh, the heat shields, a bit of science. So we picked that up last episode. Um, we've also picked up uh, radial decouplers and nose cones. In our general rocketry we picked up the 200 litre fuel tank, the Thumber SRBs and the Reliant liquid engine. Uh, we've also, more importantly, we've unlocked advanced rocketry. Now, this gives us this engine here, the Terrier, which is extremely good if we look at the uh, a lot of the other engines are very, very poor in, in vacuum. This one is extremely efficient. It's absolutely rubbish on the ground and in the atmosphere, but as soon as you get out into um, uh, in, in, into less dense air, it becomes incredibly efficient. So it's a very, very good engine for manoeuvring around in space. Um, and it's also gimbaled as well, so we can get some steering out of it too. So. That's uh, everything that we've got going on there. So let's get straight to the build and see what we can come up with. So what we're going to do is I'll just load up our last uh, our last ship that we were using. Not that one. That one. So on here we've got. Uh, Zoom in properly. Uh, our command pod, parachute, a couple of goo containers. We've got a couple of barometric pressure for getting some science. A couple of thermometers as well. Uh, below here we've got decoupler and what's that? One, two, three, four of the small fuel tanks, some winglets, and then the uh, RT45 engine, which is great for getting out of the atmosphere. So. What we're going to do is we're going to just have a, a little bit of a redesign. So we're going to ditch everything from here. Um, now we've still got the the decoupler, which we'll need because our last stage will be the pod with its heat shield. So we'll keep the decoupler there. Um, so first things first is we want to put on a fuel tank 
which is going to let us uh, maneuver around once we get up there uh, and in the orbit. So I'm hoping that a 400 fuel tank will be more than enough and we're going to put our new Terrier engine on there as well. Now this is going to be our upper stage so when we're up in the the atmosphere this will be uh, what we're using to manoeuvre around uh, to, to sort of circularise our orbit and then ultimately get back down to carbon. So uh, that's going to be our last stage. We want to put another decoupler there and then we're now looking at what we need to actually get out of the atmosphere. So what we'll do is we'll grab another probably two of these fuel tanks would be enough and our trusty uh, that one doesn't give both that one's no use so we'll use this one here now and also we'll need some aerodynamics on there as well so let's give ourselves our favourite three winglets on the end so this should be enough to get into carbon, uh, orbit so I'm not not sure if I've missed anything here but uh, we'll just check our staging anyway uh, so we've got uh, first off the launch pad will fire the engine which will burn through the fuel in these two fuel tanks we then want to stage and at the same time we want to fire our next engine as well so we'll put these in together and then this will be our final stage on our way back down where we will inject the uh, 400 fuel tank and the Terrier engine um, and then our finally our um, parachute to get us back down. So I believe that is everything that we need. We're going to take a quick look at the crew, see who's piloting. Now Valentin has not done a great deal so far so let's, uh, let's keep Jeb safe on this one just in case um, and we'll put Valentin in the cockpit. Um, now both of these are pilots so we're going to get SAS ability with, with both of these. So with that said, let's save our ship here as JEP3 and go to launch pad. Okay, so uh, staging's all set. We should be absolutely ready to go. Valentine is looking quite excited. Um, so our plan here will be to get ourselves up to about 100 meters a second, and then start banking over very, very slowly to about 10 degrees until we get up into the less dense air in this region here, and then gradually move ourselves over to approximately about 45 degree um, angle uh, so that will give us our optimum uh, arc to put us into orbit so if we have a quick look at the map so we're starting here so we'll be going straight up for the first portion just until we just start to escape the thickest air and then we'll bank over and we'll come up to somewhere up here and we'll generate what will be our highest point or our uh, apoapsis uh, up here. Now we're hoping to get that somewhere in the region of about between 90 and 100 um, kilometers. So and then once we're up there, once once we've achieved that uh, projected apoapsis, uh, we'll still be probably down here somewhere on the arc. So. So what we'll do is we'll then travel up towards the apoapsis. As soon as we get up towards there, we'll then point uh, in our prograde uh, direction, which will basically be perpendicular to the surface. We'll accelerate in this direction, um, which will then, because our arc will be something like that, roughly. Um, and what that will do is that will then expand that arc so eventually it'll move past here, past here, past here, until it eventually pops out the other side of the planet. And then we should hopefully have a, a, a pretty reasonable orbit around Kerbin, enough to satisfy the 
requirements of the, the mission that we've got. Now, what will happen is because this this will all happen quite fast once it uh, once we get up there. But once we get the the orbit correct to circularize the orbit, what we're looking for is the we've got the apoapsis, which is the highest point, and then the periapsis, which will be the lowest point. We'll start down here, and it'll build out from from the surface. As soon as these two, let's say we're at uh, 90,000 uh, kilometers here, this comes up to 90,000. As soon as it gets to about 90,000, these two will start to swap. So we'll end up with probably apoapsis over here, periapsis over here, and then they'll flick around and our highest point, uh, our, what used to be our periapsis, will then become our apoapsis if we keep going. But ideally what we want to do is to get them both sort of kind of nine o'clock and three o'clock to each other as we're looking down on the North Pole. Um, and then that will mean we've got a pretty, a pretty accurate uh, orbit around Kerbin. And then at that point we can just float around there almost indefinitely. Um, then all we've got to do after that point is to burn retrograde, so away from the direction that we're heading, that will slow us down enough so that we then start to drop into the uh, the atmosphere of the planet and then that will allow us to land. Now that should be relatively efficient on fuel. So let's go back. We've got our throttles to the max and uh, yeah to infinity and beyond. Let's give it a go. So we'll put our stability control on. Just keep it so it's pointing in the right direction. So once again, but about a hundred here, you just start very, very gently banking over to the, the right-hand side, which is going east. Now what I want to do is I want to try as much as possible to keep it inside the prograde marker. Now that will stop it from um, putting too much sort of sideways uh, pressure, because obviously the air is coming this way. If we bank too far over too quickly the air will be hitting the side of it, things will start to heat up, will start to slow down and that won't be good. So what I want to be doing is as we're getting up here, as you can see we're about to stage to the next the next engine, we're in the thinner atmosphere which is great. So we'll stage there. Just adjust so we get our lines all lined up here. Now as you can see, this engine is burning fuel way less. Now what I'm going to do is have a quick look at the map. I want, as soon as this hits approximately 70, I would say oh, actually probably 80 to 85. I'm going to be just ready to shut the engine down as soon as it hits 90. So that's now our apoapsis, that's the highest point of our arc. So we're travelling up this way. As we approach and get to around about here, what we'll do is we'll just point prograde, which will be this way at that point, and then we'll just start accelerating. Now we don't really want this to go up any further at all, if anything. Um, in order to give us our orbit now we've got no requirements on the height, but I'd like to keep it sort of between 90 and 100 if at all possible. So we'll just have a quick look at what's going on here. So we're now at 72k. And we're still going up. I'm just going to bring this around. Now our prograde, once we get approximately to the apoapsis, will be very, very close to perpendicular to the surface. So. I'm just going to nudge this over, just tap in the key to keep us kind of pointing in the right direction. So now, get to about here, then we'll just light up the engine and burn, and then try and get uh, try and get our orbit to actually open up. So that we get a little bit closer. Just keep nudging into 
keeps sort of in the center of the program marker. So we're going to go round about now. So as you can see, the arc is starting to open up. Apoapsis has stayed at 90k, which is great. So I'm just going to watch this orbit open up. And we're not going to change our direction at all at this point. I'm just going to leave that exactly where it is. The further it gets around, the faster it's going to start opening up. It's going to nudge right onto the, the, the center line now. So we'll zoom out so we can actually see it when it happens. Now I'm getting quite low in fuel, so I hope I've brought enough with me. So I'm just going to throttle down a little bit. So there's our up is starting to move around. Slow this right down. God, I hope we've got enough fuel here. This is going to be tight. And we're out of fuel. Well, that's unfortunate. So, first attempt, not that great. Um, however, here. No, we've not achieved that. That's a shame. Well, what we'll do is <laughs> we very, very nearly got it. Uh, if we've managed to keep the periapsis above, um, uh, I think about 70k, uh, we would be in a stable orbit. Unfortunately, we didn't um, didn't actually get the burn quite right ran out of fuel in the process so um, what we're going to do is we'll come over our map and we'll revert I know this is possibly cheating but rather than having to go through the process of landing and then going back here and doing it all again so what we'll do is <coughs> now the, the temptation here would be to just add more fuel to the latter section so the gives more fuel for our uh, Terrier engine that's up here. Now if we look at the the weight that we've got at the moment, we're currently let's click that to pin it, uh, so we've got like 10, 10 tons of mass at the moment. Uh, if we take a look at our RT, uh, LT45 um, this pin. There we go. So now I'd said that our mass, if we think about this, if we do approximately 10 times this, uh, would give us like 100. So as long as we're 125 or above, we'll still be able to, um, because this is, is 167 kilonewtons, as long as we are above uh, 125, then we're still going to actually be able to move this upwards. So. What we'll do is we'll just pull this over here. We'll add. Oh no, I don't want that. Uh, just add. Would that be overkill, perhaps. You only live once, eh? Right, so that's taking us up to twelve point four. So that would be one hundred and twenty-five. Uh, one hundred and twenty-five. An extra 25% would be 130, let's call it 140 to be in the safe side, and our engine is capable of pushing 167. So, this should be, I say should be, famous last words, should be absolutely fine. This should give us the extra fuel that we need to, to complete that burn once we get up there. So, um, let's just check our crew, still venting, yep. Yeah. Okay, let's go for the launch and see where we get this time. <coughs> so, 
same again. Uh, full throttle. Uh, everybody's ready. Okay, let's go. So put our SAS on just to keep our stability. And again, once we hit approximately 100 meters a second, then we'll just start very, very gently banking over. nice and gently so we don't bleed off too much of our speed with hitting the, the air at a bad angle. And I'm just going to put in a little bit of rotation as I'm going along here just to try and keep it going on that centre line going east. It seems to like to twist around a little bit counterclockwise. So not doing too bad at the moment. Just keeping it in the, the middle of that grade markup stage okay and once we're in the second stage and we're up into this part what we'll do is we'll just leave that burning we'll take a look at the map and see where our apoapsis is going to be and like I say we want to get this to between about um, 1900 still just gradually moving over to the 45 degree mark. That's a little bit too quickly. So that's about bang on there. So we don't need to do any more steering. It's just not going up as fast as it should be really, so we may have banked over a little bit too early here. But if we get this up to above 70, then we're doing okay. We can, we can safely orbit at about 70 and be absolutely fine. So we've got quite a quite a difference between the way that we're pointing and the way that we want to point, which is not great. So we're kind of like skidding along sideways here at the moment, which is not the best. Okay, so I think above 70 is probably going to be the best that we can hope for here. Even then, we might still not have enough fuel to actually circularize the orbit. So, gonna get to 70 and hold that off there. We then want to get ready by pointing ourselves over to the prograde. Around about there. Okay, so if I aim for that sort of area there. Everything's looking good. So again, once we get to just before the apoapsis here, we'll start burning this direction towards prograde marker. Full throttle and hopefully get this orbit circularized. So ideally we want to, for the length of the burn, we want to do the same amount before the apoapsis and the same amount to, uh, to average it out. Um, but so I'm going to do it a little bit earlier this time. So let's go up there. Probably too early. I'm just going to back this down a little bit to save a little bit of fuel as we circularize here. I think I started that too early. In fact, I'm going to shut down. Let's just get a bit closer to the apoapsis. So, we'll go 0.2 miles. 
of the ProGrid. Go full throttle. So this should open up a bit better now. borderline on fuel here but so we'll just slow this down as this start to move when it gets to around about here that'll be when the periapsis appears can we get this to 70? Just, there we go. Okay, so that is now, albeit a pretty poor orbit, but we're actually in orbit. So we're above 70k here. Um, unfortunately, our apoapsis has gone all the way up to 223, so we're, we're very elliptical here, um, which isn't a problem. Um, we have still satisfied our goal for the mission, which is fantastic. Um, let's also check out our messages as well. Um, I think these are old messages actually. Uh, skip the atmosphere. Yeah, 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 there we go, there's our orbit carbon. Um, yeah, fantastic. So that's that's gone really well. Um, like I say, we, we could have circularized the orbit much better than that. Um, yeah, <laughs> we, we shall improve as we go along, don't worry. Uh, so now, in order to get back down again, what we want to do is we want to lower the lowest point of our orbit so that it comes back in towards the surface. Now, as long as we get the periapsis below as you can see we've got very little fuel to, to actually manoeuvre around. So if we were to burn retrograde here, what it would do is it would bring this part, you imagine it is like opposite of your orbit. So if we were to burn retrograde exactly where we are now, it would bring in the apoapsis from sort of this direction. Obviously our ap true apoapsis is there. Um, so if we were to burn re uh, retrograde now, we would be having to basically drop our height by 223,000, um, whereas here we only have to drop it 70,000. Now it's not actually 70,000 because as soon as we get below about 40,000 metres, then we'll be in and off of the atmosphere at that point where uh, the at the air density will start to slow us down and then that will allow us to curve back down to the planet's surface. So ideally what we want to do is we want to drop our lowest point because this will be the most efficient way to do it. So our best way of doing that is to get ourselves around to the apoapsis, then burn retrograde and then our periapsis will gradually start to fall down towards the planet. So again, if we come around to here, burn retrograde, head back round here by that point the periapsis will, will try and get that to below say about 30 30 thousand uh, meters that will be enough to drag us back into the, the planet's surface so before we do that though is we're obviously on the dark side here so a couple of things that we'll do is we'll do some science while we're out here so a mystery goo from orbit and a temperature from orbit which is great and a barometric from orbit there we go and finally our crew report which we've obviously picked up before obviously in a previous attempt now still can't uh, EVA 
uh, because we've not upgraded the astronaut complex. However, since we're up here and we've got a little bit of distance to travel to get to here, what we can actually do uh, is if we press escape and we go back to our space center. Now this flight will continue on in the background. So we go back to our space center. In order to allow uh, Jeb, sorry Valentina, to do an EVA while we're up there, which we might as well because you get a lot of signs from it, is we'll come into here and we can see this is where our Kerbals are and these are all the guys that we can hire. So don't necessarily want that, but if we right click on this, we can actually upgrade for 75,000 bucks. So let's go ahead and do that. Now this will allow, um, this will allow uh, Valentina to um, to basically do an EVA. So if we now go back into the tracking station and we can see all the bot all the um, objects that we've got flying around. In this case, it's only Jeb th uh, Jeb three. So we can click on that and fly, and that takes us back to our back to our ship. There we go. Now now that we're back here. Apologies, we'll be doing this in the dark, so I think we're actually facing down. So what I'm going to do is just just roll around until we get to there, and then at least that'll bring Valentina out on top. So then V8, and there we are, right side. So we'll do an EVA report from here, so we get a good bit of science from there. And we'll also, just in case we get the chance to do another crew report later on, is we will take all the data from the craft and store it and then hop back inside. That's great. Okay, so back to our map. So we're currently here and our apoapsis is there. So what we'll do is we'll just fast forward time till we get over to our apoapsis or close to it. So let's go for Right about there. That should be absolutely fine. So now what we want to do is put the SAS back on. Is we want to point ourselves to the retrograde marker, which is the one with the arrows pointing out and down, like so. Now we want to do a quick burn. So we're hitting that now. So let's do this, and as you can see that drops really quickly. So a tiny amount of fuel, I could probably have done that with a lot less uh, a lot less boost there um, on the rocket, but um, that's brought this down to well below the target height that we want to be. So as we travel around here, what this will do, if I can get a good angle on this, is as we're coming around here we'll be dropping height all the way until eventually, I mean this is 23 so 40 is going to be somewhere around here, uh, around about here we'll start getting seriously affected by the, the atmosphere and that will slow us down to the point where rather than flying past we'll start to arc back into the, the planet's surface and that will allow us to land so um, we will just zoom out so we can see them both and let's speed up time again. <coughs> okay, so as you can see there, the the time order actually dropped out on its own because we're around about that 70k mark. Um, so we hop back out of here. 
we know that we're going to end up coming into the, the atmosphere anyway. So what we'll do here is we'll just jetson our fuel that we don't need. We don't need to do any more manoeuvring at this point. We will spin around so that we're uh, pointing retrograde, which means that our heat shield will be focused into the into the air that we're going to be hitting. Um, now we're up in the upper atmosphere now, so what we'll do is we'll just check and see if we can get any more signs from these. There's a little bit there, so it's well, worth keeping that one. We've used that one. Let's do temperature. Nope. Um, have we got a crew report from this height? Yes. So we'll just follow the follow the angle. As soon as we start getting some air pressure here, we'll knock the SAS off because this is aerodynamically stable. Um, so the, the actual shape of the craft will keep us pointing in the, the optimum direction for the heat shield. So that's good. We will do a crew report while we're re-entering. Nope. No more signs to be had. <coughs> Valentina is having a great time. So our speed's bleeding off really quickly now. Down about around about the 40,000 mark. I've just got to be a bit wary of of these because they stick out a little bit and they can heat up and explode, which is which is not ideal. close eye on those. If, if they do start to become a problem then we might need to actually steer so they're not getting hit too badly but it should be okay. So as you can see when they do heat up they heat up pretty rapidly. We should be coming out the worst of it any second now. second now but goodness me that's taken a while. We've obviously come in at an extremely shallow angle. Yeah that's uh, as you can see there the arc of our descent is really shallow. Um, ideally we would have come and um, if this if our apoapsis had been around about the 40 40k mark then we were sort of we're came around like this and then dropped in so we would have come through the thick air faster uh, so we're through that now which is great everybody survived nothing exploded this is all good news now I think we've used all of our science experiments to this point Just check that one there We'll possibly get something off the barometric once we land. So we'll just keep an eye on this and not forget to deploy our parachute, obviously. So we want to wait until we get to approximately 3,000 metres above sea level and we'll pop the parachute, that will slow us down, hit the water, everybody's happy. So that would be our engine that we've uh, decoupled falling back down. Okay, so 6,000, 5,000. I've done this far too many times before where you get distracted by something like this and you forget to deploy the parachute. There we go. Let's pop out there. That slows down even more. Good, we get to a thousand, this will pop out itself. And slow it right the way down. So a nice gentle landing for Valentina. Oh, 
hoping that some of our engines and fuel tanks survive so we get some money back from. But this is uh, this is all looking good. We, we were a little bit touch and go on the on the fuel again, but uh, because we didn't have our orbit too high on the periapsis, uh, it didn't take much to actually bring us back down again. So so it was okay that our apoapsis was way up above two hundred twenty thousand. Um, like I said, the, the the mission objective was just to orbit, which is uh, what we do. So there we are. Let's uh, take a quick barometric from here. I've got a crew report from here, and, um, but what we can do is get EVA here as well. Do an EVA report. Uh, we've obviously been in the water before, so that's absolutely fine. Um, so let's board and then recover. Okay, so good bit of science achieved from that. Um, we've got a good chunk of the parts back that we that we used. Uh, got a single star for Valentina there, well done, two XP gained, that's fantastic. Um, so we will go into our uh -huh. mission control and orbit carbon's done. So we've got 95 science, so before we do anything else we'll have a quick look at the R&D. Now all of these are 45 science to unlock, so we'll just have a quick look and see what's available. So we've got crew cabins for if we want to take passengers, uh, we've got struts for stability, a larger decoupler, um, structural fuselage which is mainly for planes and the like, uh, the uh, towers for holding the uh, on the launch pad I believe, um, brand adapter, I'm not really sure what that's about. Uh, most of this is all plane related, which we won't be getting into just yet. Flight control, some more inline reaction wheel, which can be quite handy later on. Um, some more winglets, uh, I believe. Yeah, so some of these are actually, you get a bit of steering on them. And then our science. Now, this is the one that's probably going to be the most useful for us initially because not only does it give us the Science Junior, which allows us to do uh, observe materials while we're up there, uh, we've also got the battery packs as well, which when you're manoeuvring in space, you're actually using battery power, not fuel. So if you're going to be doing a lot of manoeuvring, such as, for example, if we're doing a flyby on the moon, or the moon, as it's called, um, having a battery pack just to make sure you don't run out of manoeuvring ability once you're up there would be beneficial. So I think we'll we'll take that. Now we've got space for one more, but we might wait. Just hang fire on that and uh, see how much other science we gain on our next mission. So. So that'll do it for today's episode guys, uh, thanks very much for watching, uh, don't forget if you liked the video smash the like button and if you're new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.